Hey there guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple, durable, and beautiful raised garden bed out of corrugated metal roofing and basic lumber. I've made several variations of these beds over the years, but this one is by far my favorite. So let's get to building and then I'll try to answer any questions you guys may have about this type of bed after that. All right, so the first step in this project is pretty darn simple. I'm beginning by making two sets of identically sized frames. In this case, I am using two by threes and I have mitered the ends so that the corners fit together nicely. And then I'm securing each corner with two three inch decking screws with pre-drilled holes. Once you have both sets of your frames built, then on one set, you are going to add three inch by three inch corner roof flashing, and these will be cut to whatever height that you want the beds to be. In this case, I have them cut at 17 inches, and I'm just securing them with standard roofing screws. Once I have those installed, I then simply set that frame inside the other frame and also secure the other ends of the corner flashing with the roofing screws. And at this point, I am ready to put on my top cap. And for this, I am using two by fours, again, with mitered corners. And there's really no exact science to this. You just want to make sure that it overlaps on the inside of the frames by roughly five eighths of an inch. And that is just to allow the edge of the roofing metal to be covered up by the wood so it doesn't cut a finger and it's kind of uh, covered up so it looks nice as well. All right guys, now we're in my garden and you can see what the beds look like with actual plants growing out of them. In all, I made three different size beds. Those beds in back are roughly seven foot long by four foot wide. These two beds are about five foot long by four foot wide. And then these two guys are roughly two and a half by two and a half. And the reason I made those different sizes is because I just kind of thought it would look cool and that was the best way I could use the scrap metal that I had on hand. And over here I have some beds that I built about six years ago in the exact same style as the ones you just saw me build. So you can see what they look like with a little bit of age on them. I think the only difference is that the tin in these is only 12 inches tall and I used cedar fence boards for the tops versus uh, two by fours uh, but i think going forward two by fours is definitely the way to go uh, because these things get a little bit brittle and start to break over time as to what we are growing in these beds most of the plants you see here that are visible are just things that we started in the greenhouse and then just transplanted here in the main garden once i had all of these beds finished and they're just the usual gardening plants that most people grow beans squash tomatoes peppers uh, basically all of those things. 
obviously these are all things that were grown in the greenhouse and had some level of maturity before they were brought out here and then over in those beds there i've got beans and squash that are grown from seed that just uh, are barely starting to come up and i think that is pretty much it um, as for this little shade cloth right here if you're wondering about that that's just there temporarily I do plan on making another shade structure that will kind of go over here um, and I realize that uh, may be kind of uh, an odd sounding thing for some of you guys in the east coast and the north and places where you don't want any shade on your gardens uh, but out here in Arizona where we have very little humidity the sun is at full strength um, so there's really nothing to filter it out um, even humidity filters sun out to some degree so a little bit of shade really helps the plants do well and keep from getting too hot during our hottest months. So I think that's it. I'll probably end up showing you guys this garden again once I get everything finished. As I mentioned, I think in an earlier video, um, I'm planning, I'm basically redoing this whole garden area. So uh, those IBC totes that collect rainwater from the sunken greenhouse will eventually come closer to the fence or over on this side of the fence as well as those compost bur uh, tumblers over there so i don't know <laughs> and then i got fruit trees and different things like that those are plums and here are my peach trees and i have one apple there too but anyway that's uh, pretty much it all right, so now you've seen how I put the beds together and a little tour of what I've got growing in them. Now I'm gonna to try to answer some of the most common questions that I'm guessing some of you may have and questions that I have answered over the years regarding the corrugated metal in the garden bed. By far, the most common question that I am asked is if the metal sides, when the sun hits them, if they transfer enough heat into the soil to uh, damage the plants that are growing in there. And I can say out of about eight years that I've been using beds like this, I've never found that to be the case. I live in Arizona where we have no shortage of sunshine and very hot temperatures. And it just has never really affected the plants that I have seen. I think that's for a few different reasons. One of them is that the, uh, uh, the wooden framework kind of shades the metal uh, as the sun passes over during the day. So it's never fully exposed. Number two, the soil behind there is quite a bit of thermal mass and it would take quite a lot of direct sunshine to really affect it. So maybe if the beds were three feet tall and you had a, a bigger metal face hitting them, maybe it could be an issue. Um, and then the other reason is because the metal is vertical and if you've ever done any experiments with metal that is lying flat on the ground where sun is hitting it perpendicular uh, versus something that is vertical where it's kind of uh, like a glancing blow, um, there is quite a big difference in how much heat the metal absorbs. So that's my answer for that one. The next question I get quite often has to do with how long the metal in these beds will last. And the best answer I can give for that is it heavily depends on the environment you're in. Here I would say the metal could last 15 to 20 years. I've inspected some of the beds that I built close to eight years ago. And there is a little bit of rust on the edges where I cut them but there's really no appreciable rust that is even coming close to rusting through. Now, if you are in an environment maybe that is close to the ocean, so you have salt in the air, or just a really wet environment like Mississippi or Florida, uh, of course, uh, I would imagine the lifespan of the metal would be much less, maybe seven years, 10 years, something like that. But it just really depends on the environment you're in. And the last question I get quite often has to do with the corrugated metal and what if any metal is leached into the soil of the garden bed and ultimately uptaken by the plant and put in a tomato or a pepper or whatever you happen to be growing. And I will just uh, frame this by saying I'm not a scientist. I haven't had my soil tested, but I think it is very little 
and I would be much more concerned with all of the other toxins we are exposed to on a daily basis, whether it is the lining on the inside of aluminum cans or uh, the lining on canned foods or the uh, off-gassing of the plastics in your vehicle on a hot day. Everybody's <laughs> smelt that smell. It's the new car smell. Well, it's not a smell. It's literally just chemicals. And then uh, maybe for those of us who are in uh, very urbanized environments and heavy population environments, all of the toxins that are coming out, tailpipes and factories, uh, I would be concerned about 500 other pollutants uh, before I would be concerned about anything growing in this bed that is getting uh, up into the tomato that I'm eating on my salad tonight. So I don't know, that's the short answer is I really don't have a specific answer, but uh, that's just my thoughts. But I would say if it concerns you, definitely do your research and figure out what is uh, comfortable for you before you build something like this. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Sorry for the long-winded responses to the questions at the end, but those are just those type of questions that I thought would be better served by verbal responses uh, versus me responding to comments and emails and my fingertips bleeding from <laughs> the amount of words that I would have to type to describe it uh, properly. Uh, but anyway, um, I appreciate you guys watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like this. Check me out on Instagram and all those things, and uh, I will see you on the next one.